everybody, my name is Jenna and today I am here to once again embarrass myself by reading one of my old fanfictions. I literally got up the fanfiction just before, saw one line and was like, oh, the cringe, the cringe, you guys. <laughs> once again, we're going to be reading a Rod and Hermione fanfiction because apparently that's all I wrote when I was younger. And I say younger, but I was like, when did this come out? I published this in 2011. Guys, I was 16. I was a month away from being 17 when I wrote this. It's so embarrassing, so cringy. So this story is called I Thought You Knew and we're just, we're, we're just gonna, we're just gonna dive right in. Hermione watched as her orange fluff ball of a cat flew past chasing a rat. The sight made her smile sadly as she recalled a memory from her third year when Ron had accused Crookshanks of eating his rat. He never did apologize she said softly. Who didn't apologise? asked a voice from behind her. Hermione jumped slightly before turning to face Ginny who had come into the room while her back was turned. Oh, no one. Okay, it's really bugging me that like my dialogue is not on a different line. They're just all in one paragraph. It's bugging me a lot. Ginny shrugged and walked over to the bed on which her trunk lay open and empty. I wish I could just use magic to pack my trunk, she exclaimed. Packing it by hand just takes forever. Hermione smiled again. She'd had her own trunk packed an hour ago. Ginny looked up and caught Hermione smile. Mum says that if you're done packing, she'd appreciate some help in the kitchen. Where I assume they're at the Weasleys. When is this even set? I'm confused. It's clearly after third year, but I'm confused as to when this is actually set. But sure. Sighing, Hermione stood up and began to make her way down to the kitchen. She paused outside because she could hear voices coming from the room. She realised it was only Mr. and Mrs. Weasley, so she entered the room after a brisk knock. Uh, were you eavesdropping? Were you no do you, I... Okay. Ah, oh, Hermione, would you be able to help me peel these potatoes? I asked the boys to do it, but they disappeared as soon as I mentioned the word help. Mrs. Weasley stated as she pointed her wand at a pot of water. That doesn't make any sense. That sounds like them, said Hermione in a slightly sarcastic tone. Of course I'll help, Mrs. Weasley. Thank you, dear. Mrs. Weasley turned back to her husband and resumed the conversation they were having before Hermione came in. Hermione took the peeler in hand and turned her attentions to the bowl of potatoes she had in front of her, but soon found herself daydreaming about being back at Hogwarts. She was looking forward to seeing her friends again and couldn't wait to hand in her transfiguration essay that she had been working on over the holidays. Looking out of the window, Hermione could see Fred and George denoming the garden. She wondered where Harry and Ron were when suddenly a ball of of mud hit the window. The noise startled Hermione who slipped and cut her finger on the peeler. Okay, number one, I don't, I didn't even a little bit spell the word denoming correctly, but like also it's not a real word, so how would I know? Second of all, Hermione's like, I can't wait to see all my friends again. But also, her only friends are Harry and Ron and they're right outside the window, so not sure what she's gone about there. Those boys began Mrs. Weasley angrily as she came over to stand next to Hermione at the window. I swear I don't know what to do with them. She glared at them before turning to Hermione. Are you alright? Hermione held up an injured finger. Just a cut, Mrs. Weasley. I'll be fine. Mrs. Weasley waved her wand and Hermione's cut healed, leaving only a small scab. I don't actually think that's how magic works, but okay. Why don't I finish up here? You can go outside and attempt to talk the boys out of their mud fight. Hermione looked out the window at Harry and Ron who were pelting the twins with balls of mud. She doubted they'd listen to her so she went upstairs to wait for Ginny to finish packing. Are you okay Hermione? You seem kind of spaced out. Hermione tore herself away from the window where she had been watching Ron fly around on his broom to face Ginny who was standing with her hands on her hips. I'm fine, she said with a forced smile. You may as well just admit it. Admit what? That you like Ron, Ginny exclaimed. Oh god. What? Hermione could feel her cheeks beginning to go red. That's ridiculous. Is it? Hermione glared at Ginny who smiled mischievously. Just think about it. Yeah, okay. Ginny left the room leaving Hermione feeling completely bewildered. Outside, Ron and- okay, hold on. Are we suddenly- I'm so- I think I'm suddenly reading from Ron's point of view just so everyone knows about this really sudden tone change. Outside, Ron and Harry were pelting the twins with balls of mud and the twins were doing everything they could to retaliate. Ron flew higher until he reached the window of Ginny's bedroom where Hermione was currently sitting, adding to her already overly long transfiguration essay. How do you know that it's her overly long transfiguration essay, Ron? It could be any essay that she's written. You don't know it's transfiguration. From the corner of his eye, Ron noticed a ball of mud flying towards him and only just managed to swerve in time to avoid a faceful. A loud splat told him that the mud had hit the window instead. Without looking behind him, Ron dove to the ground and crash landed in the pool of mud. Fred began to laugh uncontrollably until Harry flew down behind him and pushed him into the mud next to Ron. Mrs. Weasley appeared in the kitchen window, waving her wand around and yelling things at the boys they couldn't hear. The four of them continued to laugh before Mrs. Weasley 
Weasley came marching outside, ready to give them an earful. Oh, come on, Mum, Ron began as soon as Mrs. Weasley was in earshot. It was only a bit of fun. Mrs. Weasley glared at her younger son. To be fair, I think out of all the characters in this story, the one I sort of think I got correct was Mrs. Weasley. <laughs> everyone else is a little bit, oh, even, you know what, even Ginny, I think, is a little bit on top. Everyone else is OOC oh, as hell. But Mrs. Weasley, I think I did all right with. Fun or not, you boys could have gotten hurt. Now, go and clean yourselves up. We've got guests coming for dinner. Mrs. Weasley turned as if to walk back to the house. Who? asked George. Remus and Tonks, I'm sure you all want to look respectful when they arrive. Oh, I still don't understand when this is set. Is it set during Half-Blood Prince? I must be. But they weren't, they weren't dating until the end of Half-Blood Prince and then Harry and Ron weren't going back to school in Dudley Hallows. When is this set? The four boys shuffled awkwardly, mumbling replies Mrs. Weasley couldn't quite hear. Mrs. Weasley nodded briskly before turning on her heel and returning to the house. Harry, Ron, Fred and George followed her before Mr. Weasley stopped them from going inside. You don't want to go in there covered in mud, he said quietly. She'll have your heads. Harry and Ron exchanged a look. If we can't go inside, how are we meant to get cleaned up? asked Fred. Here. Mr. Weasley waved his wand and the mud disappeared. He smiled at his handiwork before stowing his wand into his pocket. Thanks, Dad, cried the twins together. Don't mention it. Now get inside and stay out of your mother's way. The twins hurried inside side and bounded up the stairs and out of sight. Harry and Ron exchanged another look before climbing the stairs to Ron's attic bedroom. Once inside, Harry sat on his bed and stared at Ron. What are you staring at me for? Harry raised his eyebrow. Okay, okay, so I started the mud fight. Who cares? It was fun, wasn't it? I couldn't help but notice she continuously flew past Ginny's bedroom window. Harry began, no, 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 I'm sorry. Harry never would have noticed that. He doesn't notice anything. <laughs> Ron became very silent and Harry could see the tops of his ears had turned pink. Is there any particular reason why? No, Ron said quickly. It just, um, it gave me a better advantage during the fight. Uh-huh. And it didn't have anything to do with the fact Hermione was sitting in Ginny's room? Ron shook his head, afraid of what his voice would sound like if he spoke. You might as well admit it. Admit what? That you like her, Ron gave Harry a sharp look. What makes you think I like her? You can't stop looking at her. I do not. You can't stop talking about her because she's annoying and because you're defending everything I say, Harry finished happily. Sure. Ron stopped replying and looked down at his feet. After a few minutes, he looked up and fixed Harry with a stare. It's not that obvious, is it? Aha! Uh -huh, Harry shouted. I knew it. I knew you liked her. Shh! said Ron. Anyone could be listening at the door in this house. Sorry. So what are you going to do about it? Do about what? Harry raised his eyebrows at Ron. Give it up, Ron. You're not that thick. I don't know. I don't really think that she notices me. Ron, you spend almost all of your time with her. Yeah, but a knock on the door stopped Ron from talking anymore. Uh, come in. The door opened and Fred's head appeared. Mum wanted me to tell you that Lupin and Tonks are here and that she wants everyone down in the kitchen. Thanks, Fred. We'll be right there, replied Harry. Fred left, closing the door behind him. Harry stood up, ready to head down to the kitchen. Ron stood up too, but stopped Harry from opening the door. Not a word about her, okay? I don't want Hermione to know about my feelings for her. Harry nodded and Ron opened the door. The two of them headed down the stairs and didn't look back. If they had, they might have seen someone with bushy brown hair shrinking into the shadows, tears glittering on her face. <sighs> Okay. What's up with Hermione? Harry asked as he lifted his trunk onto the Hogwarts Express. She hasn't spoken to us since Lupin and Tonks stayed for dinner. In case you didn't notice, there was a pretty big time jump there that I didn't mark at all. So that's fun. I don't know, Ron replied. Do you think she heard what I said about her? Harry shook his head. If she had, wouldn't she be hanging out with you more? Maybe not. Girls are a strange species after all. Harry laughed and stepped onto the train. Come on, Ron. Let's find a compartment. Ron followed and the two of them searched the train for an empty apartment. An empty apartment? I think I meant an empty compartment. They couldn't find one, but managed to join Luna Lovegood and Neville Longbottom in theirs. Hey guys, said Harry as he settled into his seat. Did you have a good Easter? Oh. I think it was meant to be that they went home for the Easter holidays, but they don't get to go home for the Easter holidays. Isn't it only the Christmas holidays they go home for? Jenna. Dude. It was great, Harry. Thanks, replied Neville. What about you, Luna? Luna looked up from her copy of the Quibbler with the usual dreamy look on her face. It was very nice. Daddy and I fished for freshwater plimpies in the stream that runs near our house. Ron suppressed a chuckle. That sounds... Nice, said Harry with a forced smile. Everyone looked up as the compartment door opened to reveal Ginny, who was standing with her hands on her hips, glaring at Ron. What did you do? What are you talking about? Ron asked angrily. Ginny stepped inside and shut the door behind her before turning to face Ron again. Hermione, what did you do to her? Nothing. She's been avoiding me ever since Lupin and Tonks were over. Oh, you mean the night you just happened to mention your feelings for some girl? I... What? Ginny glanced around the compartment, taking in Harry and Neville's shocked faces before replying. Hermione came up to your room to tell you something that night, but she overheard you and Harry talking about your feelings for some girl and she got all upset. I was only able to coax it out of her about five minutes ago. That's ridiculous, Ginny. Why would Hermione get upset about me having feelings for... 
Ron stopped, the tops of his ears pink for the second time in a week. For someone. Because she likes you, Ron! A silence fell over the compartment. Harry and Neville were looking back and forth between Ron and Ginny, wondering which of them would speak first. Ron was staring at Ginny, his mouth open in shock, and Luna was reading her quibbler, completely unaware of everything that was going on around her. Hermione likes me? Asked Ron in a quiet voice. Ginny shifted uncomfortably on the spot. I thought you knew. Ron jumped up and yanked open the compartment door. Where are you going? Ginny yelled after him. Ron ignored her and hurried down the train, glancing into every compartment looking for Hermione. He couldn't believe it. She liked him. He hoped he hadn't blown his chance. This is so not Ron and Hermione. Oh my god. Up ahead, he noticed a tangle of bushy brown hair emerging from a compartment. He called her name, but she didn't hear. He sped up until he reached her. Putting his hand out, he grabbed his sh her shoulder and whirled her around. I'm sorry. Wait, aren't Ron and Hermione prefects by this point? if the story is set when I think it's set. Confusion. Ron, she explained angrily, what are you doing? Trying to make something right. Hermione stood with her hands on her hips. Is staring at me meant to make it right? Ron chuckled. Look, Ron, I really can't do this, okay? Good luck with whomever the girl is. Ron smiled sadly. I'm sorry that you heard that, Hermione, but you didn't hear all of it. I heard plenty. I heard you say that you had feelings for someone and that you didn't want me to know about it. I didn't want you to know about it because I was afraid you didn't feel the same way. Why would you care how I felt about it? Hermione stopped. She looked up and met Ron's eyes. She could see the hurt she had caused him and felt bad. No, Hermione, you don't have to feel bad about this. Oh my god, this is the biggest case of misunderstanding. This story is cringe and makes me angry at everything. I thought you knew, he whispered, his eyes on his trainers. How long? Longer than I care to think about, Hermione smiled. She reached out and took Ron's hand. Oh god, here we go. Me too. Ron brought his lips down to meet hers. As they kissed, they were vaguely aware of people coming up behind them, but they didn't care. All that mattered was each other. When they broke apart, they smiled at each other until a voice startled both of them. About time. They turned to find Harry and Ginny staring at them. Did you plan this? Asked Ron. No, replied Ginny. All we did was made you realise how you felt about each other. The rest you did on your own. Hermione glanced up at Ron, who placed a kiss on her forehead. Harry and Ginny smiled. Wait, are Harry and Ginny dating by this point? No. I don't think so. Come on, said Harry suddenly, clapping his hands together. We can celebrate in our compartment. I left Neville and Luna in there. Ginny and Harry left and returned to the compartment. If I read the word compartment one more time, I actually want to hit something. Silently, Ron held out his hand and gestured in the direction they had gone. Hermione shook her head. Oh god, not yet. There's something I want to do first. Using her finger, she beckoned Ron to come closer. Smiling, he leaned in until his lips met hers. This was how it was meant to be, thought Ron. He had no idea that Hermione was thinking the exact same same thing. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes I think the stories are getting better and then I read those and I realize they're not. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of my fan fiction. It was terrible but let me know what you thought because I would absolutely love to know. If you like this video be sure to give it a huge thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a thing. See you random. Bye.